Welcome to this video. I'm Mark Schust, and today I'm going to go over everything that's new in Magento 235. This version contains a lot of modularity updates and improvement of the APIs and stability of the platform. So it's overall a really great update. Before I kick things off, this video is sponsored by M Academy. M Academy is a place that focuses completely on Magento educational training content. So if you're looking to learn more about Magento or really fine tune your skills, go ahead and check it out. The M Academy library is where you can find a lot of free content. There are lessons, courses, and more about Magento, PHP, JavaScript, Docker. And you can also check out the premium courses such as the Magento 2 Coding Kickstart course which will really give you the foundations to become a really solid Magento programmer. So go ahead and check that out. Also, if you like this video, remember to like or subscribe to my channel for more content all about Magento. Let's get started. Magento 235 can contain some breaking updates, so be careful when upgrading. Since Magento 233, Magento's released some security patch only versions. Uh, in this case, it's 2.3.4-P1. So go ahead and patch your install of Magento before upgrading to 235 if you're at all concerned that this version is going to break your store. In Magento 235, Magento is really starting to become a little more modular. It pulled out a lot of the base payment methods such as Authorize.net and CyberSource, and also things like Signified. They pull it out of the core because they might not be installed or used on all Magento instances. This is a really good approach because why have modules installed in your store if you're not going to use them? These modules aren't going away, they're just not available in the core. So you can still find them in the marketplace and install them if you still want to use these modules. A huge update in this version is that the Zen framework is no more. It's deprecated and dead. The Lominous project has taken things over, but it's really more of a continuation of the Zen framework than a brand new framework. Magento module developers may need to update code within their extensions, so this might not be the smoothest of releases that we're used to. So some breaking updates are expected with this release. If you've been having issues with Redis and 234, you're probably not an exception. A lot of people had issues, but a lot of those are now fixed in 235. Issues with CPU cycles getting really large and race conditions were pretty common, so a lot of that should now be fixed in 235. This should greatly improve the performance and stability of your store, so all of these are good things. I'm sure everyone's now familiar with the Google Chrome 80 browser update, which included a lot of new security settings for same site cookie policies. There was a big issue in PayPal Pro which prevented an endpoint from completing successfully, so that should now all be resolved. Magento continues to work on the GraphQL layer of Magento, so products and category list endpoints have been added. There's also been some improvements of the REST API bulk endpoints. So this is all good news if you run a decoupled store or just need access to all of those endpoints for integration purposes. It looks like there's some engagement cloud and B2B module integration. So that's really Adobe's way of trying to SaaS Magento for their commerce customers. This now sings company catalog and quote data to dot digital. This may be useful if you're a larger merchant using marketing campaigns as it can make recommendations for those campaigns for you. Some other updates include continued integration of Adobe's ecosystem, including Adobe stock photos. There have also been a lot of performance and bug fix improvements around re-indexing. Uh, there was an issue where partial re-indexes would fail, causing your products not to show on the front end, which really caused a lot of headaches. So that should all be now resolved. It seems like every release of Magento keeps getting better and better. And these releases are really focused on performance improvements and bug fixes, which is really, really great. If you're running Magento 2 today, I'd highly recommend moving forward or at least planning to upgrade your store to 235. As far as what I'd like to see in the next release, Magento 2 has always struggled with data imports and exports. I'd love to see some improvements and some innovation in this area because it's really a sore spot in Magento and it's really been lacking. I'm sure Magento will continue working on decoupling their code and improving the GraphQL and REST API endpoints. But what I would really like to see focused on is an improved tooling around the front end of Magento. A completely rethought front end dev tooling process would really be great because not everyone can afford a PWA instance or really wants to go down that approach. So I think the front end compilation development workflow process can really just completely be overhauled. 
Well, that's all I have for you. If you like this video, remember to like and subscribe to my channel and turn on alerts to get notifications when I post new videos. And I hope to be having a lot more other content for you. So go ahead and check out the M Academy also. And until next time, take it easy.